And my question was in regards to the rise of China as a power and how do you anticipate to be mentioned in the new strategic concept? Thank you. Thank you. So I expect uh, to, uh, that China will be um, reflected in uh, the new strategic concept in a totally different way than today. Because in the current strategic concept, China is not mentioned with a single word. As if China doesn't matter for our security. The current strategic concept was agreed uh, in 2010. Uh, now the world has changed. And of course, China, we don't regard China as an adversary. But the rise of China has consequences for our security. China has the second largest defense budget. They have the biggest navy. And they are investing heavily in new, modern nuclear uh, missiles, long-range missiles, hypersonic missiles. Uh, China doesn't share our values. We see how they crack down on democratic rights in Hong Kong, the Uyghurs, uh, and, uh, and how freedom of press and, so, and, and, and freedom of expression is, is, are values they don't respect. And then we also see that China is coming closer to us. We see them in the Arctic, we see them in Africa, and we see also China trying to control critical infrastructure, for instance, 5G in our own countries. All of this matters for our societies, for our security. And therefore, NATO has to address those, reflect that in the new strategic uh, uh, concept. That includes technology, it was mentioned previously. It includes, uh, uh, of course, resilience of infrastructure, electricity, uh, roads, uh, 5G, our critical infrastructure. And it also uh, uh, makes it even more important that NATO works together with partners like Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea, like-minded democracies to stand up for our democratic values, freedom of press, democratic values uh, uh, around the world. NATO will remain an alliance of North America and Europe. It will not become a global NATO. But we need a global approach in this region, North America and Europe, because we are faced with global threats and challenges. One of them is the rise of China and authoritarian power working more and more closely with Russia. That matters for our security. That will be reflected in the new strategic concept. And therefore, I would just end by saying this. That reflects the success of NATO, that we change and the world is changing. So we are young as an old organization. I'd like to bundle uh, our next two questions because they're both related to tech. So uh, Federico, I'll ask you to come up first, but also Emily Susman, if you could get ready to ask just after Federico, because uh, Secretary General, maybe you can take these both at the same time. Federico. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Federico Borsari from Italy, uh, working for SIPA. Uh, my question relates to um, uh, technological improvements and how is the Alliance uh, working to, to sharpen its uh, technological edge given the, uh, the improvements of major adversaries such as Russia and China, and especially if you could give us some hints on how the Alliance is also considering the use of armed drones uh, in uh, conflicts, in recent conflicts. Thanks. Thank you, Federico. And Emily? Thank you for having us. Uh, I'm Emily Sussman. I'm a policy analyst at Amazon Web Services. And I was hoping that you could speak to the upcoming release of the strategic concept and how you would like to see emerging and disruptive technologies represented in the planning document. And if you could also speak to uh, the role that private sector technology could be used to harness uh, EDTs for NATO's mission. Thank you. As technology has always been key to uh, NATO, and uh, uh, for NATO it is extremely important that we maintain what we call our technology technological edge, meaning that we have the most advanced uh, uh, technologies in the world. Uh, and of course, <coughs> sorry, and of course with a more competitive world, we also see, <coughs> of course, especially China investing heavily in new technologies. Uh, we need to uh, keep up uh, the pace and make sure that we uh, develop and invest more in technology as individual allies and as an alliance. So we have just established an um, innovation accelerator uh, for the North Atlantic. Uh, we call it Diana. Uh, we also established, or in the process of establishing an innovation fund. And these are mechanisms to make sure that we work together with the private sector uh, to uh, uh, look into how we can develop but also use uh, new disruptive emerging technologies, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and many other te technologies as part of the efforts to make sure that we have the most modern systems 
and uh, modern technologies. Um, uh, this, of, is, this is, of course, something we do as nations, as, as states, but also the big advantage of NATO is that we have a very dynamic, vibrant private sector, and both the Innovation Accelerator and the Investment Fund is about linking the state sector uh, with the private sector to develop these technologies. Um, then on armed drones, so just say that <coughs> armed drones is one type of weapons. Uh, and, as, and as for all weapons, they need to be used within uh, the limitation of international law. So it's not as if armed drones is very different than uh, uh, cruise missiles or planes or artillery. Uh, weapons uh, can be used to protect freedom, democracy, uh, self-defense, as we see in Ukraine, but they can also be used for destruction, for aggression, for uh, uh, oppression. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, weapons can be used for uh, defending human lives, but also to uh, commit uh, atrocities, uh, uh, war crimes. So regardless what kind of weapon we speak about, for NATO, that is always the fundamental thing, that we are a defensive alliance, we are to defend NATO allies and protect our values. And, and armed drones is one of many uh, uh, weapons which have been used uh, to, for instance, protect NATO soldiers in NATO missions and operations.